This is an unsponsored video that contains products provided without charge by the manufacturer for demonstration purposes. All opinions are my own. Today on Handy Dad TV, I'm giving you a sneak peek of what my fireplace is going to turn out like and show you what's going on behind the walls, specifically the framing and the final connections. Coming up. So now that you've seen what the end result looks like, let's take a little bit of a look back to what's going on behind the walls and the design process. So this is what the model looked like in SketchUp. And I used SketchUp to um, kind of give me the perspective of the room. And uh, it, it really, I find it helpful. In fact, you can see, you know, I, I did put all kinds of the framing in here of what the chase was like behind it and and laid out the room so I could get the proportions and actually see what it would look like. Now obviously I only drew the cabinets on the one side but you could get the the picture. They were just completely symmetrical and this was was the plan. This picture on Pinterest gave us the the inspiration for the craftsman style of this mantle and the way the built-ins are and that's why we went for the glass doors on both sides and we went with one solid long mantle across the whole room the length of the room the mantle itself is or these two walls are pushed back there's there's actually a gap here and that's what forms the mantle so this wall where the television is going to go is actually set back from the face of the fireplace and that was a design decision that we we chose and what it also enables us is that less of the mantle sticks out over the the heat coming out of the fireplace so the distance that you need between the two between the fireplace and the mantle um, it actually allows you to be closer let's put it that way the further this combustible material sticks out the higher it has to be away from the fireplace because the heat comes out significantly from here now the fireplace manual is going to come with whichever fireplace you choose comes with all kinds of instructions that describe the um, the clearances that you need from the top of the fireplace depending upon how wide your mantle is going to stick out how far it's going to project that determines the distance from the top of the mantle so all that kind of information is in here as well as the framing and the placement of the fireplace so you could embed it in a wall if you wanted to in this flush wall installation or you could do it as a room divider or island um, you could do it in a corner in one of two different ways or you could do what's called a cabinet installation that's what i'm doing mine is this type of a, an approach but of course there's cabinets on both sides so it looks built in all right so switching back to sketchup let's peel back the onion and show you what's going on under the skin so this is actually the framing that i'm building and i started by building both sides of like kind of these two walls on the sides and you can see that the vaulted ceiling makes the one wall on the right side is 12 feet tall approximately i started with 12 foot boards and cut them down and then on the left side those are 10 foot boards and then i just put studs in between but the the actual projection projection of the mantle is a two by six on flat so that's five and a half inches and the fireplace itself is very close to the ground actually it is a two by four on flat with a three quarter inch piece of plywood above it and that's it so it's about what an inch two and a quarter inches off the ground and that's that's as much as we wanted we really didn't want a high hearth because again the higher you raise the fireplace the higher you raise the mantle and the higher you raise the television and we didn't want to do that so let's get into a little bit about the framing to frame the existing fireplace, I used my laser level to draw plumb lines on the existing walls, and then I assembled the two sides of the frame using long 2x4s. If you saw my master bath remodel, you already know that I suck at nailing, and I prefer to use screws whenever possible. The tops of these sides were cut at 22 and a half degrees to approximately match the angle of my 512 roof pitch. My family room is on a concrete slab, so I secured the frames down with construction adhesive and a power nailer. 
Fire in the hole! I attach the tops to a rafter with long screws and the sides to a stud wherever possible. Now because my vent pipe passes through the wall at such a steep angle, I created a custom frame using a metal stud to keep the vent away from combustible wood and drywall. It needs to have one inch clearance on the sides and three inch clearance at the top. Next I added the mantle frame and front studs. The fireplace is screwed into place using four angle brackets around the face. Then I had to wait for the framing inspection before I could proceed. Well, I got all the flooring up and the framing was approved. So now I can work on the inside and then close it in. After passing inspection, I connected the fireplace vent with high heat sealer using a caulking gun. I applied the sealer generously to the inner vent tube and then secured it with screws. The outer vent tube was attached with more sealer and screws. Plus a large band clamp to ensure a tight leak free seal. I insulated around the vent pipe using fireproof rock wool insulation. And then I covered the insulation with sheet metal, more sealer, and metal duct tape. Yeah, this might be overkill, but I found evidence of mice when I opened this wall in episode 1, so I wanted to make sure that no mice would ever make their way into the room through this hole. Before covering it up, I used scraps of wood to build an angle shelf inside the frame, and that would prevent any TV wires from ever touching the vent pipe. I covered the frame with half inch cement board using inch and five eight screws spaced around six inches apart. This will become the underlayment for the stone veneer being installed in a future video. I needed to do a pressure test to pass the plumbing inspection. And then I connected the gas line and successfully tested the fireplace for the first time. We have fire. Fire no! This one goes to the fireplace. There is a shutoff valve there. Hey, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you can make sure you'll see every one of the videos in this series as they come out. Thanks for watching.